Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Venom Vlog. This is episode 325. And today what I want to talk about primarily are the three deleted scenes that were on the Blu-ray and DVD versions of Venom. Uh, as you know, I got the Walmart edition, which came with this action figure. And I got the Target edition, which came with this little art book or picture book from the movie. And, uh, you know, I finally had a chance to watch every single thing on this uh, Blu-ray and DVD. Um, I watched some of it at Christmas and then, you know, got sick and wasn't, uh, even though I was in bed a lot, I was just watching stuff on my phone. I didn't turn on my PlayStation and Xbox and stuff like that. Um, so I, I, you know, I fell behind on DVDs and Blu-rays, uh, but I was, you know, keeping up with at least the social media portion of uh, people talking about Venom, what their thoughts were, obviously the DVD sales, which we talked about recently and how well those and the Blu-ray sales were doing and the digital sales in this movie continues to crush it as far as making money goes and that makes me very happy so i thought today you know it'd be fun to talk about these three deleted scenes and focus an episode on them because there is a lot of great special features on here um the venom vision thing was kind of neat the designing venom hearing some of the ideas that weren't used you know case in point these amazing piece of art that i was able to get on ebay um a while back which is you know a, a, you know, a concept art that wasn't used in the movie but just all the different designs of venom they didn't go into every you know detail of every single version they didn't do but they at least mentioned things like uh you know how the spider on the chest how they're going to use it how they're not going to use it and why they won't use it come up with reasons for it and it was kind of neat so seeing that seeing a, an extended look at the um stunt sequence of the motorcycle chase scene made me appreciate that scene a lot more as you guys know when we talked about the movie i was kind of critical of that scene because when i heard that the opening which was like a you know big you know set piece on a meteor with john jameson and the other astronauts finding the symbiotes and everything um and they cut that basically and in lieu of cutting that and the money they saved they were able to put that into the chase sequence and add more to that and at first i was critical of that but seeing all the hard work that went into this you know amazing chase sequence on the motorcycle made me appreciate it a lot more it's not that i didn't appreciate it before but it just made me appreciate it a lot more you know thinking about it and seeing all these people working on it and showing a passion for it because that's the other thing is sometimes i see like if you watch the green lantern movie which is a movie that i sometimes defend uh, but i know it's not a great movie but if you watch that movie with the special features you'll see that actually um some of the crew and there's like no passion on the behind the scenes stuff they shot for that movie you could just tell why that movie ultimately wasn't successful and, and didn't feel like a love letter to Green Lantern whereas this movie did feel like a love letter to Venom um you know in a way whether you liked it or not I feel like they try to get all the things in there and some of those things they they put in these deleted scenes so we'll talk about them here soon but uh but in Green Lantern I you just got a sense of like oh well this is why the movie didn't ultimately do that well it's because not a lot of love was at least from the footage they showed i'm sure there was people that worked on green lantern that were very excited about working on that movie but you know this was neat because it was like you know second unit and stunt teams and everyone and they were so into making this chase sequence just be as cool as they could make it and i think it shows so seeing that special feature was great so i like these blu-rays i like the you know having them because i mostly buy movies digitally and sometimes they don't come with special features so it was nice to you know once again, revisit the world of special features, which was the reason I always bought DVDs way back when they came out in the first place was because of special features on them. You know, it was uh, always to see how movies were made, learn about how movies were made. And uh, and so ever since, you know, working in movies, I kind of stopped watching them because I felt like I got a lot of my questions answered when it came to how things were made. Uh, but this was still neat to go back and revisit that and, and see it from a fan's point of view, because now I haven't worked in movies and television for a while. It's been, you know, five, six years since I've been anywhere on a set. So it's kind of nice to like see it from the outside again and it's really fun so these deleted scenes the first one obviously is the kid and I don't know if I'll show the footage because I don't know if it's like copywritten by by Sony and stuff but you guys could probably find the deleted scenes online if I can find them from like Sony's YouTube I'll put links down below to them or if you find them you want to put them link links down below if you don't see mine down there that's fine too um but with with the first scene it was like a kid and he's like coming out of his house and you see Venom walking or Eddie Brock walking like through a parking lot and he um a car alarm goes off and uh, it, it kind of irritates the suit. And this is information that you really didn't need in the final movie. Um, it's kind of a fun scene in a way uh, where he like gets mad, he turns into a symbiote and he smashes the car to pieces in broad daylight, no less. And oh, the only person who sees him is the kid. Um, so you're kind of, ah, it's all right. It's a little funny, a little cheesy, uh, but you ult ultimately don't need that information because they already showed a scene like that when he climbed up the side of the building and, and Venom like looked out over San Francisco and he was like, oh, maybe your planet isn't so crappy after all. And uh, then a plane flies overhead and the sound from the plane irritates the suit. So you already get that information. So there's no reason to be redundant with it. So I imagine that's probably why the scene was cut overall. But it did make for a cool little like mobile 
game uh, ad that they did. It wasn't like a real mobile game, but I think they did like an ad where you can smash a car apart. And, uh, or maybe it was, maybe it was in part of that Venom game we played online. Um, and, uh, and then you could smash this car apart kind of Street Fighter style. So that was kind of cool that it made it into, you know, the, the ad marketing, at least in that way. Um, but I, I like the scene overall. I thought it was kind of fun, but ultimately I can see why it was cut. You didn't really need it. Um, the next one though, I am a little curious about why it was cut. I think it was when Eddie Brock is heading to the, um, the uh, hospital again to talk to Anne. And he has this like, um, you know, conversation in the backseat with the symbiote, but the Uber driver is kind of listening to him. And this scene, ultimately I, they probably cut it because it was like, oh, we're going to have another scene soon where Anne is in the car with Eddie and they're going to talk there too. But the information that was said here by Eddie Brock, I thought was a nice throwback to Dark Origin, the comic book, where he's in the backseat of the car and the Uber driver is kind of like not paying attention to him. And he's talking and then the Uber driver starts looking at him through the rearview mirror. And Eddie's um, talking about what kind of kid he used to be. When he was a kid growing up, he said he used to steal other kids' toys and then hide them. And then when they were like, I'm looking for my toy, I'm looking for my toy, he would bring the toy back to them. And he was, uh, and he would, you know, in his way, he wanted to be like their hero. He wanted to help them. But because nothing, no opportunity presented itself, like someone losing a toy and him actually going to find it, he created the opportunities by stealing the toy. And then when the kid was looking for it, he would bring it to them. Um, so that is a harken back to Dark Origin, where Eddie Brock, first thing he does is he steals the neighbor girl's cat. Uh, and puts it in a box in his garage, uh, pokes some holes in it. You know, he's not trying to hurt the cat, but he takes the cat. It scratches his arms up. <laughs> um, and then he has, then he, when he goes back, he wears long sleeves. And the only long sleeves shirt I think he had was his church shirt. Uh, like when he goes to church, he has like a nice white shirt. So I think that was like the only nice shirt he had that would cover up his arms because all of his other stuff was like kid, you know, t-shirts and stuff. So he like puts on the dress shirt to bring the cat back to her. Um, and uh, and that, so it was like, that was a neat scene in that, that book because it showed how broken Eddie really is because of his upbringing with his father and how his father treated him and how his older sister treated him. Um, it showed that he had a really, um, you know, bad upbringing and it made him realize that he didn't understand or made us realize as the viewers and the readers that he didn't understand really right from wrong. Um, and that he, he, he only right at the end, you know, mattered to him and, and not how he got there. So he would do bad things to make himself look good. And that's where the beginning of his, you know, broken you know, outlook on justice and, and fairness, you know, comes from and, and innocence comes from. Uh, so I like that. And I like that in the movie where they meant in this lead scene where they, he mentions, you know, he used to steal kids toys and give them back to him. I was like, hey, that's a cool nod to Dark Origin. And it shows that Eddie does have this broken compass in a way. And it kind of alludes to the life we know he had in the comic books. And it may be hopefully an outside viewer would want to know more about that, you know, background because they're like, hey, what is, he stole toys and gave them back. That's weird. Maybe they can touch on that in the second movie. And I thought that was a good line, but unfortunately it was cut uh, in this scene, which I felt the scene itself was redundant. Eddie Brock in the back of a car talking to the driver and the symbiote. We already kind of get a scene like that with him and Anne. So again, it's redundant, but the information wasn't. So I kind of wish they took that line and inserted it into the Anne weighing scene. I wish they reshot that part with him in the car with Anne and where he says that line, because I thought that line was cool and I think it gives you a little bit of a peek at his background and what kind of person he is. And maybe that's something the symbiote could later on said, you know, I kind of did something similar to that on my planet. I would take things from, from other symbiotes and then give them back or, or you know, or, or could maybe it didn't even do that. Maybe it just understood why Eddie did that. And then maybe that's why they're so compatible with each other. So anyway, I thought it had some useful information in the scene, but I, I ultimately I see why they cut it as well. Um, but I, I don't agree with it fully. I wish that information still made it up I into the movie somehow, but at least it's here on the deleted scene. Um, and then the last scene, of course, is Cletus Cassidy, uh, Carnage himself, Woody Harrelson, and he has a few extra lines of dialogue, um, you know, to torments Eddie a little bit, pokes at him a little bit more, kind of tests him. And I think that's ultimately what this is, is, you know, Cletus is curious how Eddie made you know got his life back on track maybe uh and this is me inserting this this isn't like from something i gathered from the scene it's just me maybe over you know examining it but uh you know eddie's kind of or cletus is kind of testing the waters talking to eddie seeing what his limits are where he's willing to go eddie ultimately isn't afraid of cletus cassidy in the scene he doesn't show fear but as cletus keeps talking eddie does get you know uneasy uh and it's surprising i wish they would have inserted a scene here with like the symbiote going you know, something like, Eddie, I don't like this guy, or maybe you don't, maybe you don't even need that, but just something to acknowledge the symbiote is listening to all this, uh, because it'd be curious, I'm curious to see where they go in the next movie. Does the symbiote, is it intrigued by Cletus Cassidy and how dark he is and how twisted he is? 
does it choose him purposefully to give him this, the his offspring? Because I'm assuming maybe he, you know the symbiote is going to have an offspring in the next movie and it's going to end up on Cletus. Or is there something else going on? Is the suit afraid of Cletus? And maybe that's why when it has an offspring, maybe the offspring hates uh, Venom immediately for whatever reason. Maybe that's what their species is or it's... Or because Venom's a little different from the rest of his species, like Riot, when the sim when Carnage, you know, is spawned out of him, does Carnage resent Venom for, you know, going against the big plan, you know, the plan that their race has, which is consume a planet? Is it upset and wants, you know, kind of wants to get back and kill Venom and then take over the plan where Riot left off and try to lead an invasion to Earth? Is that going to be the motivation for the second movie? It's, it's all things that I'm thinking about and curious about, uh, but I'm curious to see... I would have liked to seen what the symbiote thought of Cletus in this sequence. Uh, obviously, we're going to find that out in the next movie, but I would have just liked a little taste of it here, of it saying something to Eddie about how it feels towards Cletus. Because Cletus, in this deleted scene, says a couple really dark things and really pushes that envelope, and it makes Eddie uneasy. So I kind of like this, but again, I know why they cut it, because it's a bonus scene, and they didn't want a bonus scene to run three or four minutes. So I can understand that, but at the same time, you know, maybe this shouldn't have been a bonus scene. Maybe this should have been right at the end before all the credits rolled. Um, and maybe, you know, they could have played it up a little bit more or something like that. Um, but either way, I liked it. I liked all three of these deleted scenes for different reasons. Um, and I can see why they were cut each one for different reasons. But um, but I'm glad they, you know, saved them and put them on this Blu-ray and DVD. So I want to know what you guys think. Did you see the three deleted scenes? Did you watch the other special features? If so, let me know what you think, as always, in the comments down below. And we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we have a lot of stuff coming up. I'm going to be doing the Venom versus stuff coming up. Uh, Venom versus Avengers. Venom versus Iron Man. We're going to be doing all those episodes. Venom versus uh, Nova, I think. And uh, Darkhawk and, you know, Wolverine. Uh, so we're going to have a lot of fun Versus episodes coming up between now and the release of like Avengers Endgame. And then we'll keep an eye out for any movie news. But for now, we're just going to stick to those comics. And then um, obviously Absolute Carnage, like that kind of stuff. Maybe we'll talk about that more in my, uh, you know, my review of issue 12 of Venom, which I did read. And I will make a video on that. Uh, but as you know, after issue 15, which is the Cullen Bunn stuff, uh, I am going to be done reviewing monthly Venom comics after that run. And I'm going to switch over and just review Savage Avengers. Uh, but the stuff leading up to, um, you know, like Absolute Carnage and all that stuff, when it comes out in trade paperback, chances are we'll cover it then. And that way it feels a little bit better because then I'm not talking about each week and spoiling things for people who aren't reading it. I can wait till the trade comes out. We can all review it together uh, and talk about it together. So that's what we'll do from now on. We'll switch to graphic novels when it comes to new Venom comics. Um, but yeah, and then we'll have other things coming up soon. More Mo Morbius news. A lot of information came out. They're filming right now in London. Uh, so we have a lot of information. And maybe in the next episode or the one after, we will cover all that stuff uh, just to catch you guys up to date with Morbius. So again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the future. Peace.